Remember when you could just drive up to the campground, get out, go in, and get a really nice spot to camp? That was before COVID. Oh, COVID. But we've got some tips for you, ways for you to find your perfect site. So don't go away. Hello America. I'm Lynn. And I'm Danny. And welcome to RV America. Welcome back. So today we want to talk to you about some tips uh, that we've learned after our recent stay at Piney Campground. Piney is a nice sized campground. It's located in the Land Between the Lakes National Forest. It's National National Recreational Area. National Recreation Area. Uh, it's some place I went with my kids the whole time they were growing up. I've camped in Piney in a tent, a pop-up, a fifth wheel, and a pull behind. So I'd say we've done just about all the camping in Piney. And it's always a great place. It's a great place to take your kids. There's lots of shade so you can, even on those hot days, get underneath a big tree and just, you know, park in the shade so the air conditioner doesn't have to constantly run. They have cabins, they have nice bath houses that are set up and every little section has its own separate bath house. So it's not like one bath house for all of them. They have a huge swimming area that you can swim in. Uh, they have some really nice sites that are located right on the water. And in case I didn't mention it, Piney is located on Kentucky Lake. So it's surrounded with water and there are some amazing places, amazing sites that you could get, which are total full hookup and then some that aren't full hookup that are right on the water so that you can take advantage of all the water has to offer. Yep, and the land between the lake is right there where Tennessee and Kentucky meet out uh, western Kentucky. And it's just between uh, Lake Barkley and Kentucky Lake. Just a beautiful strip of a peninsula. I think it's the third largest peninsula uh, the land between the lake is, and it's just a beautiful area that you can camp. So what I've typically done in the past is drive up to the gate, go in, get reservations, and then still get a really good site. But times have changed. You can't do that anymore. We made reservations that Tuesday before the Friday we were going to be there. And we got a nice campsite. But it was a little more tight than we liked. It was tighter and had electricity only, no water, no sewer. There's a shared, what they call a shared water faucet, and it's like one that's in a central location, and everyone around hooks up their hoses and fills their tank from the water faucets that's located in the central location. Right, and we met friends there, and we had a great time. Don't we don't want to knock Piney because we love Piney. Love Piney, and we'll definitely be going back. So let me just say, even though we got a place to stay, it was not my preferred campsite at the Piney Park. So we want to talk about these tips, but before that we want to talk about what the new normal is. You have COVID and that's land called a place. I called one place to try to get reservations and it was in Kentucky on the other side of Lake Barkley or Kentucky Lake. And they were booked, I called them last month in June, and they were booked every site all the way out till September. Yes, so months September. and months September. And then also, when we were looking at a place in uh, North Carolina, each campground mm -hmm. had 75% of the normal capacity. So they're regulated. And, have you heard? People are buying RVs. So one article says that People are buying RVs at a 650% higher rate than last year. 650%. Huge. And also, that same article mentioned that the RV rentals is up by 1,000%. So what does that mean? There's a lot more people needing campsites than they are camp campsites. That's because campsites have not increased to meet the demand. It's supply and demand, you know? And so there haven't been that many. I've seen one new campground that's opened up that I saw on Facebook, and that's I'm sure there are a few scattered here and there, 
but not that many. So we have a great shortage of sites for people to stay in. Also, let's admit it, camping is social distancing at its very best. Yes. So it's perfect for for COVID, but just you've got to you got to realize what the new normal is. And everyone else realizes that too. People who weren't campers before are now loving camping because it's perfect for COVID. But that brings us to our tips. We've got five tips for you. So the first thing I think we need to talk about is that we're going to have to be better at making reservations in advance. Mm -hmm. Obviously, calling and making the reservations the same week that you want to go stay there is not working very well. So, you know, if you could do them a month in advance, and it would probably even be better if you could stretch it out farther than that. I know our lives are very uncertain right now with the way things are happening and everything. But I think the farther in advance you make your reservations, the better site you're going to be, you're going to be able to get, the more amenities you're going to have on your site, and the happier you're going to be with your site. I will totally admit that I am the last person to make reservations. I push it off on him. <laughs> I'm like, you make the reservations. Yep. And he does. He's really good at it. So that's a good thing. So. We all have to agree that the new normal is leads us to that, that tip, tip number one. We must make reservations further out. Time out, we interrupt this video. Take the time right now to hit the subscribe button. And hit that notification bell. And give us a thumbs up if you like our videos. Now back to the video. So the second tip, we've got to use the tools that are available. We live in an internet age and there's some, a lot of great tools, a lot of great apps that can tell you what campgrounds are open and what campgrounds have sites available. One that we recommend to you is Reserve America. Reserve America, you can go online to use it or download their app. They have Android and Apple app and you can download that. And what the great thing is, is the way it operates. Have you ever went to one site and typed in your information, the date you were gonna be there, how many people, how long your rig is, what kind of amenities you need, and then you find out nothing's available. Then you go to the next campground and to their website, and you put in the information, you put in how long your rig, how many people, what you're looking for, what amenities, and they don't have anything. Mm. The great thing about Reserve America is you put it in once, and almost every public campground uses it and numerous private campgrounds use it so you're able to put that information one time and it even sees if you're flexible if something's available so it'll tell you it'll give you a list of places if you're choosing Cherokee North Carolina it lets you know what's available within whatever parameter you put in whether you put in 50 miles or 100 miles it lets you know what's available so it's a great tool to use to help you find your perfect campground. One stop shopping? One stop shopping. I like it. Yes. So tip number three would be to check the reviews on the campground that you're going to, especially if you're going to some place that you have not been before. Because I'll be honest, if people have been honest on their reviews and if I had looked at the reviews before a couple that I've gone to earlier this year, I probably would not have gone there. Right. And we use a couple things. Lynn likes using Google to, mm -hmm. to get her reviews. I use RV Park reviews. You can go online and look at that. And there's several other places that will give you great reviews. And another place is Facebook groups. We're, we're members of several Facebook uh, groups. And they will tell you what's good about a certain place. And mm -hmm. you might write that one down. Hey, when I'm in that side of t the country, I want to go there. So uh, use the reviews. As I said in tip two, we're in the internet age. Never before did we, we know so much about a particular campground. They'll tell you about uh, how the campground is, how tight the sites are. They'll give you reviews on the host even, how, how they treat people. Who wants to be around a, a rude host? So you can learn so much by going to those reviews. Yeah, and you've heard the saying, a picture's worth a thousand words. That's one of the reasons that I really like Google Maps reviews, and I'm a contributor to that on a regular basis, 
they put a lot of pictures on there and it's people just like me that put the pictures on there that I take. And so it gives others the opportunity to look at it and go, this is really nice, you know? Yeah, because they'll t those pictures will tell you so much. Oh, look at that yeah. site. Oh, I want to go, go to that site. They mentioned that particular site. <clears throat> or they might say, these are kind of tight, but when you look at the picture, well, I've been in worse. So it lets you know so much. Those pictures really, really do help. Yes. So once you narrow down the campground that you want and you've looked at the reviews, go a step farther and look at the site, the campground map itself. Almost all campgrounds have a map out there of how their, lo their sites are located. And if you look in that, and for instance, if you have small children, you might want to be near a playground. Or if you're tent camping, you really want to be near a bathhouse. So, you know, if you look at the site map, it will help you pick the location that's right for you and your family so that you get something that makes you really happy. Right, because you want to look and say, am I, you don't want to be that camper that ends up between the bathhouse and the dumpster. You know, that can be a smelly place to be. Especially in 95 degree heat. And the fifth point is something that a lot of people may not think about, it, but it has to do with Google Maps. Yeah, one thing I, I like to do, and I would really suggest that you do, is get Google Maps. You can start off where it's at, and you can, you can drill down to where the campground is, and you can drill down even farther. And guess what? You can put it on satellite mode, and you can see where the trees are and where how the campgrounds are. So I've been able to look at how far the campground sites, how far the campsites are apart, and where they're at, maybe they're on the water. So you've got the map Lynn was talking about with the campgrounds and you say, oh, that's site number such and such. I want to be right there if it's available. Maybe this one, if that one's not available. So you're able to use it to drill down to eye level. And it's a great tool to use to see where things are. You're able to see where the road is, whether you got road noise by your particular camp site that you're maybe looking at. And that might say, I really don't want to deal with that this time. So you're able to use that. So it's a great tool. Google Maps with the satellite uh, view on really has helped us uh, look for good sites. So let me give you a bonus. If you've got a certain site that you just love or a certain tourist destination that you want to go to and, and you want to stay in that national park or in that state park, then it just makes sense to make that reservation even further out. Lynn talked about a month to two months out, but if you want to go to one of those hot spots that everybody's wanting to go to, or you just want to be in that same campsite every year, then use that because most campgrounds will let you go out six months or maybe even a year to 13 months to make that reservation. So if you want to have the beautiful uh, spot on the lake with the beautiful sunsets, then try that as a bonus. So in review, number one, we've got to start making reservations farther out. As much as we like to do it on, uh, be spontaneous and do it on the spur of the moment, we've got to stay, start making reservations farther out. Use Boondockers Welcome or Harvest Host to fill in those spots, but you've got to make the reservations early. And that's another thing, Boondockers Welcome, we have loved it since we've been using it. We haven't used Harvest Host yet, but it's because of the heat that's the only reason. <laughs> I'm a fan of air conditioning. Second thing is using those tools, not only for Boondockers Welcome or Harvest Hose, but use the tools that are out there. We talked about Reserve America, and there's other si sites and other apps you can use to find out what's open and what campsites are available. So use your tools. The, the third thing is check the reviews. You need to know if it's a great place to stay, if you're going to like it, if they've had problems taking care of their guest or the host has been rude. You want to know those kind of things. And the fourth thing is once you realize what campground you want to stay at, now try to find your perfect site by using the campground map, the site map, so you can see where things are at and where you want to stay. Whether you're a family and you want to stay near that pool or near that playground or you're a tent camper and you want to stay near, near the bathhouse. And the fifth thing we talked about was using Google Maps. Use the satellite uh, view so you can drill down to see exactly where in that campground you want to stay. 
So those are our five tips. And that leads us to Lynn's question of the day. I hope those are useful to you. However, you may have something that you know that we did not mention, and it might help people a lot. So if you have something that you do that you think would help us and other viewers, put it in the comments below because we, we are all in this together. Right. And so we all need as much help as we can get. So just put your comment down below and let us know what your secret tool is to get the best campsite. Yeah, good, great question. So if you like this video, be sure you hit the subscribe button below. And yes, give us a thumbs up if you like the video. And also, don't forget to hit the notification bell because our adventure is just beginning and you don't want to miss it and we don't want to miss you. That's right. So God bless and many safe travels. And until next time, go RV America. Well, to subscribe to a channel, the first thing you need is to have an account. And if you have a Gmail, you already have an account. And you just log on. And then you'll find the subscribe button at the top right, right below the channel artwork. You would click that and you automatically subscribe. And the next thing you'll notice is that once you subscribe, there will be a small bell to the right of this, your subscribe button. Hit that. That way you'll get notifications every time we have a new video that comes out.